It says, where a large amount of electric energy must be transferred from one point to another, the efficiency with which the transfer is affected is related directly to the cost of the electric energy. You and I, we pay electricity based on how many kilowatts of energy the power company sent to us. Not what you use, because we lose some of that in the transmission line, in these cables, the wires come into your house. You lose some in your house if you have an old building. The electric company doesn't, uh, doesn't care. You get charged for what they ship to you. What you're getting, it might be 50%, 60%, 70%. That's our power factor. We're gonna be looking and see how much power factor uh, our building is. What's the power factor for it? If it's a low number, you know, you're gonna be living in that building for a long time. If you're living there for 10 more years, it might be worth it to go and rewire the whole place because in the long run, you'll save some money. If you're renting from somebody, the landlord is not gonna spend six, 7,000 to rewire the whole, the whole building. It's says, tough luck, you pay the rent. Or if you're gonna be selling the house in a year from now, you're not going to spend the $7,000 to rewire that house or $5,000 when you know you're going to sell it soon and let the new guy deal with it, the new person. So before we talk about the power factor, let's talk about something called apparent power. What is an apparent power? How do you find the apparent power? Now, let's say we have a voltage source, like we have a circuit here. There's the load. I'm just drawing a picture. I'm not even telling you what that is. And the voltage here, V, and there's a current going through it, I. And let's assume for the sake of discussion, the voltage has a value of V maximum times cosine WT plus theta. Then the current, if you calculate the current going through that, is going to be some maximum value, that number, cosine WT plus phi. Now, we talked about last time average power. Remember the average power? What was the definition of average power? It's one half V max I sub max cosine theta V minus theta I. We talked about that theta V minus theta I. In this case, it will be theta minus phi for this example. So for this example, the average power will be V max I sub max cosine theta minus phi. I'm using, that's theta V and that's theta I. Now this is the, the, the one I'm interested in, that cosine theta minus phi. That's really my power factor. You're gonna find out that first the power factor is equal to, the definition actually of that, it's the average power over the apparent power. Now, the apparent power, which I didn't write the equation for it. Maybe I can put it up there. I talked about the apparent power. But the apparent power is actually, it's V max times I sub max. The electric company assumes your house that theta and phi are in phase. There is no shift. You have a perfect load there. That's a resistive load. So if that's the case, there is no difference between theta I and theta V. So the difference between them, that'll be zero. What's cosine of zero? One, that's why, bless you, the apparent power is V max times I sub max. So what is the power factor? It's the average power. Isn't then the best that you could do, 
at your one half. I forget, it's, if it's RMS, would be VRMS, IRMS. It's cosine, just take this one, and this is zero. What'd you say there, Luke? Uh, well, before you added the one half. One half, yeah. So now, what is the power factor then? Well, the apparent power, which is one half, V max, I sub max, divided by one half, V max, I sub max, times what? Cosine, oh, I have them, the cosine on the top. Cosine theta V minus theta I, the average, over the apparent, let me erase the cosine here. And what will happen to the one half and V max and I sub max? They cancel each other out, so your power factor is actually cosine theta V minus theta I. Now, your power factor, ideally you want it to be what? One, that's the maximum you can have. That's when these two are in phase. When theta V minus theta I equals zero, the power factor is going to be what? Cosine of zero, which is what? One. That's the highest you can have. And what's the lowest value? When your load is purely what? An inductor or a capacitor? Because then this angle will be what? Either plus 90 or a minus 90. So when theta V minus theta I equals either plus or minus 90 degrees, that's the worst case you can have. Your power factor is going to be what? Cosine of either plus or minus 90 degrees, which is zero. So your power factor is between zero and one. That's where your power factor is always going to be. In real life, to get a one is really difficult. That means you're making everything perfect. You know your wires. I don't care how nice they are, how short, how skinny, how thick. They're not gonna have a zero resistance to them. So to get a power factor of one is really difficult. You might be getting 0 0.95, 98, 97, that's doable. To get a power factor of zero again, probably very slim chance because not everything reactive. Again, you take a coil, it's a wire and you wrap it around, right? The wire itself, when you stretch it, it's a long wire. It has a value, R value. It's not ideal, it's not like R is zero for that. So your number is going to be between real life between zero and one. Mathematically could be zero, could be one. Reality says, well, it's going to be more than zero, less than one. Now, the apparent power when you're looking at it, and by the way, if you're using RMS values, the one half will disappear. Remember we said last time, for a sine cosine value, VRMS equals what? V max divided by the square root of two. And I RMS equals I max over the square root of two. So apparent power, I will always write apparent power because my uppercase and lowercase power, they all look the same to me. I don't know. So we'll call it P and that's equal V RMS I RMS, if you have the RMS value. If you don't have the RMS value, then use one half V max I sub max. And the average power, it doesn't change the power factor. Average power, I call it P average, lowercase p, and that's V RMS, I RMS, if using RMS values, cosine theta V minus theta I. Or, if you're not using RMS, is one half V max I sub max cosine theta V minus theta I. How do you know when you're looking at a problem if the value is RM, I mean not RMS, if the value is an apparent power or an average power? How do we know that? The units are your giveaway. The units for apparent power is VA. 
volts amps. The units for average power is what? Watts. So look at the units and the units will tell you if that value is an apparent power or an average power. Isn't that the same thing? Isn't watts like, you know, four? It is. But that's how you differentiate between them when you look at oh, them. Oh, when they give you the Yep, when they give you the unit, you know this is actually, I just don't like the way the A looks there. When they give you the unit in VA, they're telling you that value is actually your apparent power because cosine does not have any units. You know, cosine is unitless. So if you just look at the units here, you go, well, that's volts and this is amps. It should be really VA. It is, but then if you say both VA, how do you know which one is apparent and which one is average? So all circuits books, Use VA for apparent power. Use average power. W will give you that letter W. So when you're looking at them. Now again, as I said before, if you have a purely resistive load, I'll put it again. That's what you like to have. Then what will happen here? The voltage and the current will be what? Are in phase. There's no shift. That means theta V equals theta I. So that means theta V, if you subtract theta V minus theta I, is going to be zero. That's what that means in phase. And the power factor will be what? One. So what does that mean? Your apparent power and your average power will be the same in that example. Will be the same value. Now, on the other hand, a purely reactive, that means all capacitors, all inductors, reactive load, that means your load is purely like a, an inductor or a capacitor. That means what? Purely reactive. There is no resistance in it. So basically only capacitor or only an inductor would there be both capacitor you and could inductor? but it's going to simplify to one j value then what will happen here theta v minus theta i, depends what you have there, it's going to equal either plus or minus 90 degrees. That's what that means. Which means, again, your power factor is going to be zero. Now, you're going to hear a couple more terminology here. Leading power factor, lagging power factor. So what does that mean? Let's begin with leading power factor. When we say the power factor is leading. And we have lagging power factor. So leading power factor, and again, or lagging power factor. What does that mean when we say leading or lagging? Yes. Leading or lagging power factor. Referring to, when you, when you start talking about that, the phase of the current.
with respect to the voltage. I'll give you a way to memorize that quickly in a second. Now, that means what? The inductor, if you have an inductor, inductive, that's an inductor here, load will have a lagging power factor. factor. Capacitive load will have a leading power factor. And that's diffi difficult to remember, which one is leading, leading, which one is lagging. Leading, lagging, this, that. So somebody came up with this saying, Eli the Iceman. Eli the Iceman. E here re reverse to the voltage. Can I help you? For? Okay. Eli the Iceman. E here refers to the voltage. Just get this young man going here quickly. So notice L for an inductor. In the inductor, where is the current in relation to the voltage? Is the current before or after? I is the current, E is the voltage. The current is after the voltage. The voltage is leading, the current is what? Lagging. Lagging, comes after. In the capacitor, look at the current in relation to the voltage. The current comes what, first or second? The current leads the voltage. In the inductor, the current lags the voltage. In the capacitor, the current leads the voltage. And that's the way most people remember which one is leading, which one is lagging. What but, does that really mean to be like? Leading? Okay, what that means actually, when you start doing your homework, again, the capacitor is going to, I mean, the current is going to peak before the voltage. But in terms of calculation, when you're looking at it, if you have a leading power factor, which means what? What do you have, capacitor or inductor? Capacitive, right? When you do theta V minus theta I, the value of that has to be a negative value between negative 90 or zero degrees. Can't really equal zero because if it's zero, there's no power factor. And with the other one is the reverse. Just give me one second. I'm trying to get this young man all set. And while I'm waiting for it, I can do double duty here. For a lagging power factor, that's inductive load. That means theta V minus theta I has to be bigger than zero, less than or equal to 90 degrees. Positive value. So if you're looking for the current, now you know if the angle is positive or negative. I'll give you an example in two seconds. Give me one minute. Let me just have this young man take the test. Vermin, right? Sorry. Vermin, the name? Ven? Yeah. V E N I A M I N, right? Yeah.
Okay. Go to the classroom and start working. It should be open. Oh, to our class? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is 16, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's what that means, why we need to know if it's leading or lagging power factor. Eli the ice, man, just remember that. Now, let's take an example, go through it, and see if we can have some calculations. So here is my source. I'll, t I'll leave the notes clean here. I'll take a fresh sheet of paper. We have a source that looks like this with the value of 60 angle zero. And notice this one, it's volts and RMS. They're telling me it's RMS. How is that? Better? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So the line itself, the wiring here, has an impedance, or it could be something else here. But right here, I'll do some wires in a minute there. 2 minus 1J. And we have a load here of 1 plus 5J. The question, find the average power delivered to each of the two loads. Load one, load two. The apparent power supplied by the source, the power factor of the combined load. So we need three things. Number one, the average power delivered to each load to the apparent power supplied by the source This way you're going to be charged by the electric company on this one what the source gives you. This could be your house right here. This could be somebody tap into your house, a neighbor here, you know. So you're paying for this. Let's see what you're getting here. And it could be actually you. That could be an old fridge you have in the basement. And that could be, I don't know, maybe you have electric heat too with an old wiring. So it could be anything. So now number three... We're looking for the power factor of the combined loads. Both of these guys put together. The power factor of the combined load. Okay. Let's look at the average power first. Well, these two are connected how? These two loads. Series. So I can combine them into one without affecting my current going through it. Because I know what the voltage here, I just need to know what the current. Or I can just find the current here. And what is my current going to be if you decide to find the current? It's the voltage, which is what? 60 angle zero divided by what? The sum of these two. When you add these two loads, what are you going to have? 3 plus what? 4J. So here's my calculator. Let me get my friend here. My TI-89. And I'll put it on the screen. Sometimes people said, hey, can you show us how you do this on the calculator too? 
So I'm going to divide these. My calculus is set up to be in polar mode. So here's the first number, 60 angle 0 divided by parentheses 3 plus 4j equals. And it says 12 angle negative 53. That's the current. Let me label this voltage here through load 1 plus to minus V1 and plus to minus V2. So I know what V1 and V2 are. V1 is going to be the current, Ohm's law, the current I times what? 2 minus 1J. I know what I is. That's this number. So multiply that by 2 minus 1j and we have what 26.8 angle negative looks like roughly 80 degrees right and what's v2 i times 1 plus 5j I times 1 plus 5J. And the answer to that is 61.2 angle. Just double check these numbers, roughly 26 degrees. I don't trust me with any calculator. Oh, any calculator. Huh? The first question, the average power delivered to each load. P average for load one. The definition I gave you is what? VRMS, IRMS, cosine theta V minus theta I. But which V are we talking about? That's V1. So it's V1 RMS. The current's the same. So what's V1? 26.8. What's IRMS? 12. Cosine theta V1, which is negative 80, minus a minus, that's a plus 53 degrees. Let's do the math here. 26.8 times 12 times the cosine of negative 80 plus 53. Ooh. I must have hit something, new probability before that button. I get new prop 6. Let me try 26.8 times 12 times cosine negative 80 plus 53. 286.54, is that what you got? Yep, yep. 286.5 watts. That's average power. Average power. AVG to load 2 is going to be what? VRMS, that's 61.2, that's the voltage. IRMS, which is 12. Cosine theta V, theta V is what? 26 minus a minus, that's a plus 53 degrees. Sixty-one point two times 12 times the cosine of 26 plus 53 and I got 140.1 and we got that number two yeah. so we answer question number one find the average power delivered to each load we got them next question 
What is the apparent power supplied by the source? That's this source. Keep in mind, notice the current is coming in. That current is entering this negative end. That's I. Get a sneeze. One half <coughs> well, this is out of mass value, right? Yep. So we don't use the one half. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. So now, the apparent power supplied by the source. is equal to P, which is VRMS, IRMS. So what's my apparent power is going to be? My VRMS, looking at that circuit, is what, 60? Well, just we have the maximum value, don't put the angle. The current is what? 12, you don't put the angle, just the RMS value times 12. 60 times 12, was that 720, is it? Wouldn't it be a negative value? Yep, supplied. I can write supplied. I already wrote supplied here on the top. So if you put a negative value, that indicates supplied, or you can write just supplied. So what do we have, 720? Notice VA, supplied. That's question number two. Now, question number three. The power factor of the combined load. The power factors. I can tell you, this is not a good thing to have at home. You're not getting a lot of electricity. You're paying for a lot of it, but you're not getting that much out of it. So that was B here. Now C is the power factor of the combined loads. That's the apparent power, I mean the average power, divided by what? The apparent power. Now it can't be the reverse because your average power is always going to be less or equal to the apparent power. It will never be more than that. So the power factor has to be one or less. So if you put this on the top, you're getting a value more than one. Every one of us would love to have that. You know, the power company sends you 10 kilowatts or, and you're getting 50 without paying for it. That's not gonna happen. So my average power combined for both of these, the combined average power is what? Load number one took how much? 286.5. The power taken by the second load, which is what? 140.1. And what is the apparent power? 720. 720. What is it, 50, 60%, 70? Small number, it's not going to be that good. 286.5 plus 140.1. It's 426.6 divided by 720, more than 50%. It's just about 60%. Yep, 0.59. That's not good. You're paying, just imagine, you go to a steakhouse, you pay for the best piece of steak, you know? A 10 ounce piece of steak, you said filet mignon, 20 bucks. That's not a lot of money, but 20 bucks for, because you college students can afford it, so that's a good price for you. 20 bucks for a 10 piece, 10 ounce piece of filet mignon. When you get your steak, it's only six ounces. They go, what happened to 10? Oh, no, no. The chef has to taste it first, you know, take some out of it. We charge you for the 10, but you're only getting six ounces. You're not gonna be happy. And that's what's happening actually to that house. They're paying for the 100%. They're paying for this much power to come to them, but they're only getting 60%. The rest is being lost in the wires, in the old appliances. Now, let's see if I can find 
a better example than that even. Let me look in the back of the book here. Okay. Another example here. I have no idea what they're looking for. I never saw this problem. Oh. I was looking for something like bigger problem, but that's okay. Here we have a current source. Two seventy five. Angle twenty nets milliamp. Both of these examples are online. Huh? Both of these examples are Are they? Are yeah. Okay, let me see if I have another one. On my other video, I guess this example was up there, the other one. So let me see if I can find. Uh, come on. If I can find, yep. If I can find a different example. Power, here we go. Okay, let's take this. Oh, actually, that's a good example here. I like this example. I'm going to change this problem. I'll do something different. So I'll give you a, a nicer problem, more complicated, because I was looking for something of substance, like a bigger problem. Where did I put my pen? Here we go. Now well, we have time. Probably we can finish it. Let's say we have this circuit. It is 20 angle zero RMS voltage source. That's voltage RMS. Notice you only have one ohm resistor here. We have a capacitor here of negative 1J. We have a dependent volt, a current source, not a voltage source. We didn't do that many dependent sources. And it's pointing down with the value of that two times Vx. We have another one ohm here. We have an inductor here of 1J. And this is, by the way, where Vx is right here. And the question is, this actually load here, Zl, is adjustable. You can change the value of that. So when you see a line going through it like this, that means you can adjust it. The question here, We're going to adjust, so the load ZL, I'll, I'll put it there, the load ZL is adjusted until maximum average power is delivered. So the load, that tells me something, ZL is adjusted until what? Maximum power. Maximum, I should say average power, is delivered to it. Maximum average power, better way of saying it. 
is delivered to it. So what does that mean? They don't tell us what ZL is. That's a big significant. That statement tells me a lot, actually. ZL can be whatever you want it to be. No, not whatever you want it to be. You want to get a maximum average power. It's um, the conjugate of... Yes. ZL has to equal what? Z feminine conjugate. So you have to go and find what Z feminine for the circuit and let ZL be that. It's not any number. So for maximum average power delivered to that, you want ZL to equal Z feminine conjugate. So I got to do that first and figure what ZL. After I do that, here's the next question, or the first question. Find the maximum average power delivered to ZL. Find the maximum average power delivered to ZL. That's the first question. Question two, find the power factor for ZL. How much power does ZL get? Was it 50%, 60, 70, 90%? So notice the first statement has a lot of work for me to do. They don't tell me what ZL is. Hmm. Keep looking at the board, it says it's not clear, but I forgot I have the lights backward in the room today. So let me find what ZL should be first. I gotta find Z7 for the circuit. That means I gotta chop it here and find Z7. If you remember from circuits one, I said before, if you have independent and dependent sources to find Z7, what do you wanna do? V open circuit over what? I short circuit. circuit. I find it that's the best way. That's not the only way, but that's one of the ways I do them. So let's take this and find V open circuit and I short circuit, divide them to get Z7. So here's my V open circuit, which is V7, by the way. So my circuit's going to be chopped like this 20 angle zero. RMS. I have 1 minus J. You know what? I'm just going to do it like this. 1 minus J. Instead of just throwing a resistor and a capacitor. I'll just do them that way. I have what? 2VX. There's one here. I don't even care what I have here. This is the inductor, which is what? 1J. And this is V open circuit, which is VX. Notice so VX is really V open circuit. So I know V open circuit equals VX. So if you don't want to use VX, you can use V open circuit there. We can assign currents going in any direction you want to. Somebody just asked me on the video, send me a question. I never respond to them because I get a lot of them. But they said, you always assign your current any way you want to. It doesn't matter which direction you assign them. Could we do mesh to solve this? You could, sure. Mesh will be fine too. What's nice about mesh actually, because when you do null analysis, you have fractions, it makes the math ugly. You know? Where mesh will be probably the math itself and not as bad. Because you're gonna go this voltage minus that divided by this, then you have to get rid of that. You know? So if you want to do mesh because you don't like the math in it, I have no problem with it. You wanna do mesh here? Look, here we go. There's I sub 1. 
there is I sub 2. Mm. Can I do one loop right there? KVL right here? No. Why? That's a current source. Can I do a KVL right here? No. That's a current source here too. Can I do a KVL on the outside? Yes. So negative 20, angle 0, plus 1 minus j times what? I1 plus 1 times I sub 2 plus 1j times I sub 2 is equal to 0. Clean that. 1 minus j times I sub 1 plus 1 plus j I sub 2 is equal to what? 20 angle 0. That's my equation number 1. Really much easier in terms of the math itself. See, if I did no analysis here, I only have one, this is V open circuit, this is two V open circuit, that's a constant. I only need one equation. But even with that, the math's still going to be ugly because you have all these J's on the bottom. This might be easier, especially with my calculator here. Now I need a second equation. Okay. I sub 1 minus I sub 2 is equal to 2 times Vx, and we said Vx is what? Isn't it V open circuit? That's equation number two. But now I got a problem here. How many equations do you have? Two. And how many unknowns do you have? Three. I need a third one. You could write V open circuit in terms of I2. Yep, V open circuit equals what? 1j times I sub 2. Right here. That's my third equation. Now, if you plug it in here, if you take this equation, this becomes what? I sub 1 minus I sub 2 equals 2 times. 2 times what? 1j I sub 2. Move the I sub 2 there. What's I sub 1 equal to? This becomes 1 plus 2j times I sub 2. I don't, have, I don't even have to use a calculator for this, like fancy calculator for this problem. I'm using what? Substitution method. I'm solving for 1 and replacing it. Now grab that equation. Replace I sub 1 with 1 plus 2j I sub 2 plus 1 plus j I sub 2 equals 20 angle 0. I can combine all of these on my calculator in one step. There we go. 1 minus j times 1 plus 2j, add to it 1 plus j. So I got 4 point, because I'm in polar mode, 472 I uh, angle 26.6 .6 I sub 2 is equal 20 angle 0. Can I get I sub 2? So 20 up divided by 20. and I came up with 4.472. Is that the answer? Same number. Wow. I, I came up with 4.472 angle negative 
26.6. Let me know if you get that number. So do you know what view open circuit equal to now? V open circuits 1J times I sub 2 from here. See it? So my V open circuit it's 1J times I sub 2 which is 4.472 angle negative 26.6 degrees. 4.472 what is 90 minus 26? What's 90 minus 27? One J is one angle 90. Four. That's the open circuit. That's your V feminine. Now I gotta find the Ishore circuit. And I don't even get to answer the questions about the power. That's just to find what ZL should be. Yep. I sure it's easy to write. Yeah, because you're going to kill one of them. Yep. Correct. Now let's find the I short circuit. You're going to short circuit it right there. So here's what we're going to have. I'll put this one for now here. That's going to become zero, right? Yep. And now you put a wire there. And this is your I short circuit. And this is your VX. You just shorted this one, this is gone. And what happened to Vx? What's the value for Vx? Yeah. Zero, that means this is gone. And when you kill a current source, it becomes what? Open, not a short. Like this, dangle like this, that's it, it's gone. I short circuit. I can find I short circuit in one step here. It's going to be 20 angle 0 divided by what? 2 minus J? When you add these two. Twenty divided by two minus J. Eight point nine four four angle twenty six point six. So now I know what Z seven is. It's V open circuit over I short circuit. What's my V open circuit? Where'd you go? Four point. 472 angle 63.4 over what? I short circuit which is 8.944 angle 26.6 degrees. Four point, uh, let's see, here we go. Four point four seven two angle sixty three point four divided by eight point nine four four angle what twenty six point six. And I came up with beautiful number point five 
angle what? 36.8 degrees. So what does ZL has to be? Equals Z7 in conjugate. That's 0.5 angle negative 36.8. The conjugate, you switch the sign. If you have 4 plus 2J, it becomes 4 minus 2J. This one, 0.5 cosine, if you change it to rectangular, 0.5 cosine 36.8 plus J, 0.5 sine 36.8. This will be 0.5 cosine negative 36. That's the same as cosine 36, but the J value will be negative. So now this is just to find what ZL is. So now I can take my circuit, that ugly one that we had up there, and says I can replace it with this one. I have a V7 in. These are all RMS values. So what was V7 in there? V7 in was 4.472 and 3.4. 4.472 angle 63.4 volts RMS. Replace it with an impedance here. And we found that Z7 for that circuit to be 0.5 angle 36.8 degrees. And now our load is going to come right here, ZL, which is 0.5 angle negative 36.8. That's what my circuit, that's my load. That's ZL right here. So let me come back and see what the question was. Find the maximum average power delivered to ZL. Find the maximum average power delivered to ZL. Find the power factor of ZL. I'm almost done with it. I'll put these, this video on YouTube for you guys. And I'll put the notes there too. Now, I need to find what the current going through that circuit. So what is I through the load? It's going to be 4.472 angle 63.4 divided by the sum of these two. And let me go to Baba here. Come on, Baba. 4.472 angle 63.4 divided by two set of parentheses. So we'll do the order of operation 0 0.5 angle 36.8 plus point, oh, another set of parentheses 0 0.5 angle negative 36.8, close, close. According to my calc, if I push the right button, I think they are good here, the way I type them. If you can see them, I don't know if you can see them. They look good the way it's supposed to be, right? Good luck seeing them, huh? Is it hard to see? Can you see them? So the answer I came up with, you can tell me if you get the same answer, 5.585 angle 63.4 yep and to find the voltage cross L is I times 0.5 angle negative 36.8 this RMS again, and I came up with what? 2.792 angle 26.6 RMS. Now, 
what is average power to the Lord? It's VRMS, IRMS, cosine theta V minus theta I. My VRMS is what? 2.792. My IRMS, 5.585. Notice just the number in the front, no angles. Cosine what? VRMS, that's 26.6. Minus what? 63.4 2.792 times 5.585 times cosine 26.6 minus 63.4. 12.486 watts. And the last question. What is the power factor? Power factor is cosine theta V minus theta I. That's cosine, what's theta V? 26.6 minus what's theta i? That's equal to cosine what? 26.6 minus 63.4. I'm doing an extra step intentionally. Negative 36.8. So what's the cosine of that? I got 0 0.801. Why did I do the last step here? Why do you think I have this value there? I have. A, I, I, I did this for a reason. Is it for lagging? Yes, you have to state, is it lagging or leading? If theta V minus theta I, where's my notes? Power factor. If theta V minus theta I, it's a negative number, it's a leading power factor. If it is a positive value, that's a lag, and so you have to state it's a leading power factor. With all these problems, they're going to tell you the power factor is leading or lagging, and that lets you know if the angle should be positive or negative. If it's negative, it's leading. If it's positive, it's lagging. How are we gonna remember that? Think about the X and Y axes. I just thought of it just now. I never really planned it that way. But just an idea. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Wait, is that the last page? Yep. my paper stay together just an idea just hit me right now if you look at the positive versus negative the positive on this side the negative on this side notice the negative it actually leads it's on the left side of this one before the positive when you go in this way it's the negative it's leading if it's positive it's lagging the negative before the positive the positive after the negative. So when you think of negative, think of a leading power factor. When you think of positive angle, think of a lagging power factor. Just think of these two. Negative is before, that leads. Positive, it's after this, it's lags. I'll forget next week, but that's a different story. Yeah.